Hey everybody and welcome back to Packet Tracer 101. My name is Zach Hill, tech evangelist here at NextGenT, and I'm going to be covering workspaces in Packet Tracer. If you missed our previous videos or want to check out future videos on Packet Tracer, make sure you check out the links in the description below. As we said, we are going to be customizing our workspace in Packet Tracer, so each time we open up Packet Tracer, it looks just the way we want it to look. We're going to cover the most common options and preferences, and we'll start by showing you how to set up the font and the background for your command line window in case there's a particular size or color scheme that you want. Next, we're going to look at the Hide tab, and we'll see how we can choose to hide certain items and device tabs from view. Lastly, we'll take a look at the Interface tab. We'll see all the options available for creating a default network view, including automatically generating device and link labels, allowing you to hover over a link to see the endpoints, and setting the CLI tab as the default view when you access a device. There's even a tool to help you align your objects of a diagram for an even symmetric professional look. So let's check out these options. To get to them from the main menu bar, go to your options and then preferences. When you select the preferences, there are several tabs to choose from. We'll begin by looking at font. So just as you would think, a font would be where you could set the font style and size. You could set it for your command line windows, both for your iOS and your Windows based devices. So the box right there is targeted specifically for the command line windows under the dialog CLI. You can also change the font, background, and colors for your command line, both in Windows and iOS devices, and there is a large palette of colors to choose from. And then lastly, at the top, they've got a sliding bar that allows you to adjust the font, but you need to use this with caution because it does adjust the font for the entire application. It doesn't do it just for the command line window, so when you slide that bar up, it will increase the font size for everything that you see, including the menu bar in the window and everything in the application that has a font. So there's one thing about the font window that makes it unique in that it is the only one that has an apply button. All of the other windows and things that you use simply have a checkbox and you just close the window and you're done, except for the font window. You do have to click the apply button to accept those changes. So let's take a look at this in Packet Tracer. We can go up here to the options and preferences and then font. Now, if you see here, I've got my CLI set to 16. I like the font to be large enough for folks to be able to see when I'm creating videos just like this, but that may be too large for you. The larger you make the font, then the bigger you need to make your CLI window in order to fit a command in without it wrapping to the next line. So if you're like me and you hate when you're typing in a command and the window isn't big enough and it starts wrapping to the next line, you can change your font size to make it smaller. So if you look in here right now, I've got it set to 16, and that's pretty viewable, that's not too bad. But from here, if I try to type in a command like IP route and try to type that entire command out, we can see that it starts to wrap to the next line, and that's inconvenient. So in order to get it to fit all the way, I have to set it a little bit smaller. So what I could do is instead of go here to the options, preferences, and font, and I can go into my command line and say, you know what, I want it to be 10 instead of 16. So we need to make sure that we click apply and close the window and we can go back in and it's much smaller. Now that's all we needed and now we can fit the entire command in the window. So if we look under here as well, we can see that they've got this one, tooltips. And tooltips is just simply these little drop downs here that describe what these tools do. And then what I can also do is change the background colors here. So I like black text with white font for the iOS and I like white font with black background for the PC console but I could change that. I could go in and say that I want the font to be white on the iOS and the background to be something crazy like blue. That's probably gonna be something terrible. Yeah, that's pretty painful. But you can customize that just the way you like it. If there's a particular color combo you want, you can set that up. And then the last thing there is a slide bar. And if you notice on the far right that it's set to eight on the end. And as you move it up, it increases all the way up to 20. And just remember that this slide bar will increase the font for everything. So if we go up to 16 with this, look at the size of the icons here and the size of the font and everything here. And now when I click apply, bam, it all gets bigger. 
So I think you could see that if you got much bigger and your network diagram was crowded and you have devices that were close together, when the labels get this big, they can start stepping on each other and start covering up each other. So I recommend that when you use this slider tab, be conservative. It's easy to see at 12 and it's not overcrowded. And just be careful because this top one does affect the entire app, not just your command line windows. All right, our next option on this list is the high tab. And the high tab, I would say, generally speaking, you want to make sure that all of the boxes in this tab are unchecked. If you check a box, then that means that there's something that you don't want to see in the network diagram when you open up a device. So I would recommend, especially after doing an upgrade, if you download the newest version of Packet Tracer, just go in and make sure that those are all unchecked by default. You have no idea what the default settings could be, so just a good idea to uncheck them. So if you look at these options in Packet Tracer, options, preferences, hide, this is really what you should see with them all unchecked. You're going to see everything by default, meaning when you open up and you look around, you're going to see the physical tab, the config tab, the CLI tab, and the attributes tab. But if you go in here under the high tab and you say, I don't wanna see the physical tab or the config tab or the attributes tab, and you notice that there's no save button, Remember, that's only on the font. So if we check these, we just close this out and we can go back in. And now we see that those three tabs are missing. All we see is the CLI tab. So maybe there's a reason you don't want things to show up. You just get tired of having to choose. So most of these things here at the top all have to do with hiding something. The few that are at the bottom regarding wireless will do just the opposite by checking them. It will show something. So this will show a wireless grid when you're using wireless and you've got an access point on that's sending a signal. You can fill that grid with a pattern and you can even have a little spinning box so you know that when you connect a wireless device, you'll see them send out a little waved icon that connects to the access point. You can hide that if you want so that doesn't show up. So as a general rule, just go in and make sure these are all unchecked to begin with so nothing strange occurs. The next tab we'll look at is the interface tab. And the interface tab has all kinds of cool things that all focus on not just the font color and that kind of thing, but it focuses on your network diagram itself, how it looks. So you can do things like hide and show different labels that are part of the network. You could show the link lights or not show the link lights at the end of the links between devices. So you can have it so that when you hover over a link, the endpoints and the interfaces will show up. So you know what interfaces each end is attached to. You could set the CLI tab as default if you check that box, then every time you open up an iOS device, it won't open up to the physical tab. Instead, it'll go right to the CLI. There's even an object alignment tool. So you check that box, and when you're moving your objects around in your diagram, and as you're setting things up, a little dotted line appears, and that lets you know when certain things are parallel. There's some other things that show animation and play sound, things that you're probably not going to be working with here unless you begin experimenting with Packet Tracer on your own. Things that play telephone sounds so that when you start getting into IP phones on the network and someone calls, it actually goes ring, ring. So there's a lot of things here that you can mess with. Just opening up Packet Tracer, drag a few things up, you know, connect them and start seeing what happens with the different boxes and explore for yourself. So let's do that now in Packet Tracer. We go to the interfaces tab, we see device name labels, and that's on by default. And that will be on by default. You can imagine if it wasn't, that would make your network diagram a little bit difficult to understand. Another thing you can show is the device model labels. I don't typically use this one, but you can, and it will show the actual model number of the devices. But I usually have that off by default. There's another one that I have off by default that some folks find handy, and that is always show port labels. So you click on that, and the ends of the links will always show up on the diagram. And you would think, why wouldn't you want that? The only reason I don't like to use that is because if you see in the bottom left here, they put these labels in default positions. And for the most part, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly where I would have them all, except this, you know, gig zero Two, I would not be covering a device name label, and that are, there's no way of moving this when it's set here automatically. So for that reason, I create custom labels for all my ports, and then I could slide them exactly where I want them to go. Then there's show link lights. This is on by default, and this is very handy. You know, when that goes off, it's are those links up or not? Which port is blocked from spanning tree? You know, you don't know, but it turned the link lights on, and then there you go. This is usually checked by default, show port labels when you hover over. So I can hover over this and boom, each link shows up and they stay there for, I think it's 60 seconds or two minutes. 
They stay there for a little bit and then eventually they do disappear again. Another handy thing I like to do is use the CLI as the default tab. So that way when you open up a device, it goes right to the CLI tab. Whereas we'll see without it on, the default is the physical tab and usually don't use the physical tab. Usually when you're accessing devices, you're going into the command line to do something. So probably a good idea to go ahead and use the CLI as the default tab. And then this one here, this align logical workspace objects. This can come in handy when you've got a bunch of things set up and you wanna make sure that they're set up just right. You get these markers that show you uh, that the tops of the devices are in line, that the labels are in line. So it helps you line things up. So that comes in handy when you're creating a diagram. It's not that, it's not just that this all has the elements that it needs, but it should be pleasing to the eye and should be something that's easy to look at and easy to understand. So it's taking some time to really lay things out and make them symmetric and provide good labeling is definitely a plus. So you just want to set up these preferences under interfaces, uh, however you like. You know, some people like to know the model number of the devices, for instance. You know, this is for you to kind of customize the way you like it. So these are some of the most common preference options that we can set with our workspace. So every time we open up Packet Tracer, uh, we can expect that same look and feel. So another thing that Packet Tracer will allow you to do with some advanced configuration with enough time and practicing with it, you can go in and build enterprise networks with all the stuff that we've worked at. Uh, VLANs, trunks, access ports, spanning tree, you know, GHCP, NAT, and take it at that. Well, take it a level further, you know. Uh, we can add uh, IP phones, 802.1x, authentication for hosts. Uh, you can also emulate a service provider cloud. Maybe you want to pretend you have a frame relay network or you have an analog phones on your network and you want the analog phones to be able to call over the PSTN. So you can simulate that in Packet Tracer, building home networks with home type devices, home routers, tablets, uh, wireless laptops, smart devices. You can have a cable modem or a DSL modem to connect to your ISP. There is a plethora of Internet of Things devices that you can use and an Internet of Things server that is based in the cloud that you can access with one of your smart devices from home and turn on and off from the porch light or on and off the sprinklers or open the garage door, whatever you want really advanced stuff if you want to look into this and this is definitely not part of the course but you can really customize these things and you can upload images that will be landing page for your web server or images that will show up if you have a television in your network so there's a lot of things that you can do with it the packet tracer is perfect for what we're using it for um, but if you wanted to take it a step further and get out there and start practicing with different technologies like internet of things you have the capability so that wraps it up for setting up your workspaces and customizing your view in Packet Tracer. If you want to check out more videos on Packet Tracer 101, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And when you're ready to take your career to the next level, follow me over to nextgent.com where we can take you from zero to engineer. And we take these Packet Tracer labs to the next level. Follow me over to nextgent.com and I can't wait to see you there.